All right, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all sound good. Go tell all my friends that my ship done came sailing in. Of that one, it came filled with the Holy Ghost. Up here. Filled with the joy of the mind. Wouldn't oh you God. like to ride on a ship like mine? Angel. Go tell Angel. all my friends yeah. that my ship done the king sailing in. It came filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the joy of the mind. I had felt like singing that. Wouldn't you like to ride on a ship like mine? It came filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the joy of the mind. Wouldn't you like to ride on a ship like mine? Hallelujah. You know, whoever wrote that song, they wrote it to, um, to symbolize the coming of Jesus. Praise God. And if you ain't saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, you ain't getting on that ship. <laughs> you ain't going back. But, but Jesus is coming. Amen. He coming back for a church without a spot and without a rank of praise God. So let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Yes. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, O Lord, that you have allowed us to gather again in your holy name. I thank you, O Holy Father, that you have kept us, that you provided for us. I pray, O Lord, that you continue to Charge your angels around us to protect us as we go about our daily lives, oh God. I pray, oh God, that wherever we are spiritual, wherever we are ill, oh God, we know, God, that by your stripes that we are healed. And we pray, oh Lord, that you continue to prepare tables in the presence of our enemies. We pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, that you continue to fight our battles. Every day, teach us how to trust you. Teach you how to teach us how to believe in you. Teach us how to keep our faith strong and to want you, God Jesus Christ. And as we come together today, oh Lord, I pray, God, that you open up our ears, open up our mind, and our understanding to take heed to your word and to grow thereby in the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, today, today we're going to be talking on the three wheels of Satan. Praise God. The three wheels of Satan. And if you bear with me, we got to go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16. 1 John 2.16. I'm not there yet. I know it's... Okay. 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world... I want y'all to pay attention to these three things, okay? Yes, For all that are in the world, the lusts of the flesh... The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. So our three key phrases, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. 
got that lust of the flesh, lust of the eye. Yes, ma'am. Pride of life. All right, so let's let's travel to First John. First John chapter five. First John chapter five and verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Verse 8. There are three that bear witness in earth. The, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believes not God has made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. And we're going to travel. We're going to rest in... Genesis, Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye should not eat of every tree of the garden. And a woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye should not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God do know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now this, this the, uh, this is the word in there. three, I'm on verse six now. Now this is another key verse. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that's lust of the flesh. And it was pleasant to the eyes. That's lust of the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. That's pride of life. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. In verse 7, and the eyes of them both was open. And they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves Aprons, praise God. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are the three main attacks of the devil. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, okay? And we're going to see why. The lust of the eyes, I mean, lust of the flesh, according to Matthew chapter 4. Satan also tempted Jesus with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Praise God. That was his three main attacks against Jesus. And that's his meat, that's his three main attacks against us too. Praise God. His three main attacks is to attack us with the lust of the flesh. Jesus told the devil, he said that man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, praise God. So the lust of the flesh, you know, the devil might, you know, in the book of Job, when, when, when Satan was allowed to touch Job, he was allowed to touch his flesh. Uh, being attacked with lust of the flesh is not just food. It could be sickness. 
It could be money, lust of the flesh. It could be family, flesh of my flesh, bones of my bones. You ever felt forsaken by people? Lust of the flesh is the thing that's necessary for us to survive as humans. That's lust of the flesh. But what we have to understand is that we are not just a natural being or human being. We are a spiritual creature having a natural experience. Praise God. You were spirit before you came flesh. God had to breathe inside of you when you was conceived. When you was conceived in your mother's womb. God had to breathe into each of us the breath of life. You was a spirit before you was a human being. You would be in shape and mold in your mama's womb, but all spirits came from God. God had to breathe, and you became a living being. So one of Satan's greatest attack is to attack us as our natural being. Can you still trust God? But it seems like you are lacking all the necessities to survive. The Bible said that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. But it was necessary for Jesus to go into the wilderness to redeem us back unto God. Because... The children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they fell. But it was God's grace and mercy that allowed them to make it out of the wilderness into the promised land. But before God could have done that, he said he had sworn in his wrath that the second them had to die. Even Moses didn't went into the promised land. And he spoke to God face to face. So the lust of the flesh is, what if I lack the necessities for me to, to survive as a human being? Can I still trust God? Do I love God? More than the necessities of life. Or do I love the necessities of life more than I love God? And see, Satan will attack us to cause us to believe that we are forsaken because we lacking something. Satan will attack you. You ever got unemployed? Are you looking for work? Looking for work? You see, like nobody want to give you a job. You need to work to survive. But God said, I never leave you. I never forsake you. I want to abandon you. So when does he even tempt the Eve? He tempted her with the forbidden fruit. Her key phrase was this. God said that we could eat of all the trees. They had plenty of food. Plenty. She said all of them except one. And that was the one she fought for. She said that God said that we could eat of all these trees, of all these beautiful fruits and luscious fruits, except one, the tree of good and evil. He said, don't even touch it. Don't eat it. Because the day you eat it, you should surely die. And see, this how Satan will get us with the lust of the flesh. He wants to convince us that God is not for us like he said he's for us. He convinced Eve and Adam 
that God was withholding something from them. Now God had them all the trees except one. And I believe God put that one there to test our obedience, to test our love, and to test our trust in God. See, when the devil can get you to start doubting God, he can become a snare to you. So, the Bible says in verse 6 that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was good for her flesh, he convinced her. She said, okay, it's good. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was an ugly fruit. I, you know I often wonder how the forbidden fruit look. Cause if it's forbidden, then something about it was ugly. <coughs> I'm pretty sure. You know, it's amazing how Satan can convince you of the ugliest things in the world. He makes something so ugly, so beautiful to you, and you fall for it. Then after you fall for it, you say, Well, why fall for it? So you allow him to beguile you, to deceive you. I often wonder how the forbidden fruit looked. I'm pretty sure it was a forbidden fruit. Praise God. Praise God. Satan, second attack on a human being. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. You know, it's a difference between looking at something and lusting something. You know, most times when we think of lust, we think of it in a sexual way. The common form is a man lusting after a woman. That's the commonality of it. You can lust after anything. Man can lust after a woman. Woman can lust after a man. You can lust after a car. You can lust after a house. You can lust involves two more things. Lust is not just looking, and lust is not just beholding. When you begin to lust something, you have what they call an inordinate affection towards it. Some people lust position. They'll do anything to get on the top. You, some people lust promotion. You ever had them people on your job? They always try to make you look bad so they can get the brownie points. That's to keep you from getting a promotion. Hmm? You can lust after a house. You so into getting that house, you know you can't really afford that house, but you'll do anything to get it. Lust includes an inordinate affection to get it. In other words, lust will cause you to take your focus off God. So that's why Satan allowed do the lust of the eyes. He want to take your affection off God. He want to, he wants you to have more affectionate towards the things of the world. Instead of having more affection towards the creator of the world who is able to give you all things. But the thing about it is, say like the Apostle Paul, I mean Apostle Peter said, he said, God is not slack concerning his promises. He ain't slack. But he suffers long because God want to build a character for the blessing. God want to make us mature for the blessing so that when he bless you, you won't forget about who gave it to you. All the time people get blessed, they don't pray like they used to pray. God bring you out, you don't forget about God. God make a way for you. You don't forget about your way maker. And God don't want you to, uh, to have all the riches of the world and you lose your soul. 
God wants us to prosper just as our soul should prosper. So when we, so when Satan attacks us with the lust of our eyes, he want to take your eyes off the prize of living a good holy life. So he attacked us with the lust of the eyes. In Matthew chapter 4, when Satan attacked Jesus, the Bible said what? He took him and, and showed him what? All the kingdoms of the world. So we got to be careful with how we have our lust after. How affectionate we are after other things. Do you love other things more than God? Do you, do you have an inordinate affection on something in your life that you more affectionate towards than God? Because if you do, they say it has to go you with lust of the eyes. I tell you a good example. When Jesus, when Jesus was walking on the water towards the disciples, right? Peter, they all they was afraid at first. They said, Oh, it's a ghost. And then as, as Jesus got a little closer. As Jesus got a little closer, they said, oh, wait, 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 that's, that's the Lord walking on the water. That's that Jesus walking on the water. So when Peter got out the boat, he was doing fine as long as his eyes was on Jesus. He was doing fine. He was walking on water too. Then he took his eyes off of Jesus and he started looking at the water. Then he started looking at all these whales and winds and everything. And he 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 forgot his, his affection went from the Lord to the toss and turns of life. Satan would attack us with toss and turns of life. Jesus ain't never said every day was gonna be a good day. But that doesn't mean the Lord forsaking you. He didn't never say you won't gonna have no enemies. He did say he would prepare tables in the presence of your enemy. So you know you're going to have somebody against you. Everybody's going to be for you. I don't care how hard you try. You can try to be everybody's friend. And everybody ain't going to be your friend. I don't care how hard you try. You can be the nicest person in the world. You can be the sweetest person in the world. You can be born again. Say the worst sinner. Liar. Back. Everybody got enemies. I don't care how sad or early you are. Somebody ain't gonna like you. Somebody just don't like you like that. It ain't nothing wrong with you. Everybody just ain't gonna like you like that. And if Jesus had enemies, if Jesus can have enemies, do you think everybody gonna like you? And Satan last attack. Lost on the eye, lost on the pride of life. But that's a little more to the pride of life. There's a little more to that. Satan said in the book of Isaiah, he said that he will exalt himself in the assemblies of God. Satan had it made when he was Lucifer. He, he really didn't need to go any higher. He, he was one of the chief, the chief angels up there. He had it going on. The Bible said that Lucifer... Before Lucifer became saint, he was so beautiful till his body was just a living instrument in and without itself. He was one of the most beautiful angels in a hierarchy of angels till he was already in the throne room of God and his body was just made of these beautiful instruments to sing praises unto God. Night and day and day and night, but Lucifer, that wasn't enough for him. Being one of the chief angels wasn't enough for him. He became prideful and God made him who he was. He said, I will exalt myself in the assemblies of God. In other words... I will exalt myself even above God to be God. That what made God kick him out. That what did it right there. When, when Lucifer said that he wanted to become God, God ain't had no choice 
but to kick him out. Him and a third that followed behind him. The pride of life. Pride always come before a fall. Nobody knows it all. No, nobody got it going on like that. Maybe a little more expertise and experience. But we all need one another. No man is an island. Not even Trump can be president without the United States. Satan attack her with the pride of life. First of all, she saw that the tree was good for her flesh. Then, second of all, it was pleasant. It became pleasant to her eyes. And third, the tree, she the third the tree had became a benefit to her to make her wise. And then Satan told her what? You will become like gods. Gods yourself. And we know that there's no other God besides him. So they believe what the serpents say. And when they did eat of the fruit, they did die. All of a sudden, they realized they ain't had no clothes on. Oh, my God. That, that's when our sexual assault came into being, praise God. That's when, that's when all the, the rapists came into being. That was the murderer. They didn't have a sinful nature. They died from a spiritual part. We were created. We were created to live and not die. When God created man, he created us to be in good health. <clears throat> All these colds and the cancer, pneumonia, all these sicknesses you see now, we didn't have that in the Garden of Eden until they built up the forbidden fruit. They died. They began to die every day. After they ate the forbidden fruit, they begin to get some arthritis in the bone. The body was never built to die. That's why when you get a cut, you heal. Hmm? You take medicine, oh, your headache can go away. But eventually, since the curse, there's a point at once for every man to die. But this is the blessing. That for God so loved the world, he didn't allow us to be faded away. He said, I will prepare my son a body, and I will allow him to bear the curse on a tree. That whosoever believes in him, even though they might die a physical death, they got eternal life in Jesus Christ. That we are not cursed to go to hell. We don't have to be cursed to go to hell. We don't have to be cursed with all the sickness and disease. That even if my body do go down in the grave, there's a resurrection of the saints. That the saints of God that died before us, they're going to have to get up first. Praise God. That one day that... The ankle bone to connect back to the leg bone. And, and all those that die in the Lord, they're going to rise unto eternal life. But woe unto the man. And woe unto the woman who die outside of the Lord. You're going to get up to something. But it won't be eternal life. Praise God. That now through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now through the blood of Jesus Christ, we can inherit eternal life. I like the way Paul said, he said what? Uh, my, um, hmm, we're going to put on immortality. That where we used to be, where we are ordained to be, we have attained it again, praise God. Through the blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is the only thing that can sign your name. 
Okay. Because without the shedding of blood, that's why I like Good Friday. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That the wages of sin is true. It is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And, and, and somewhere in the scripture say, oh damn, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? That through the blood of Jesus, we can pass over from death unto eternal life in Jesus Christ. So now we know the three, the three main attacks of the devil. He want to attack us with the lust of our flesh, with the necessities of life and our families, to discourage us, to sway us away from God through that attack. If that attack don't work, then he said, okay, I mess with what they see. I mess with their affections. I take your main affection off God and I, I, I attack you with lust of your eyes to take your focus off God, to keep you from growing in the Lord, to keep you from being on the right track with God. I attack you with that. And if that don't work with, with you and the devil, he said, I got one more attack. I attack you with the pride of life. I make you think you do this and that. I, 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 I fill you up with pride. But we shall humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he can exalt us in due time. Because who God put up, no man can put down. And who God put down, no man can put up. So if that's for us, I encourage you mm -hmm. to trust to trust in the Lord with all your heart. To love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And to love one another as yourself. God should be our greatest affection. He should be our greatest love, praise God. God should be our greatest love in our lives. God should be our greatest love, our greatest affection. When we love God like that, you can't go wrong. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So I hope y'all got something out there. And I hope that we, we come to the understanding uh, not allowing the enemy to attack us with those three main attacks. The loss of our flesh. The, the loss of our eyes. Yeah. And don't allow the enemy to attack you with the pride of life. Praise God. Huh? You and the angel want to do me? Oh, I saw. I stepped on you. I saw. The both of y'all can do me. How about it? Yeah. Are you getting too much? I'm trying to sit down. I'm trying to sit down. Sit down for right now. Hey, Tom. Hey, hey, man. Hey. How do you like the football game? Yeah. Yeah.